Hello again, everyone. Welcome to 90s to Now. I am Jerry Strauss, and we have somebody, you know, sometimes we talk to people whom we remember from the 90s, from that period of time, and sometimes we talk to people who we first met in the 90s. Uh, Today, we've got a guest who we got to know before the 90s, continued to love her during the 90s, (laughs) and continued to watch each and everything that she's been doing ever since so this is a big one folks we have robin lively with us robin oh you are so kind look well, look I, I feel so flattered what an intro thank you for that <laughs> well thank you for being here and and i'm going to tell you i mean thank you of course because it's wonderful to have you we all love you in so many different projects i think everyone kind of has their favorites but it wasn't until getting ready for this interview and looking at your whole body of work um, by my estimation, this is your first day off since <laughs> 1978. So <laughs> I really yeah. appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, it's been a long journey. <laughs> it's nice to have a day of rest. So well, thank you for this. <laughs> no, no problem. We'll try to we'll try to take it easy. On 1978. <laughs> it's crazy. You literally, according to the research that I did, have had either a TV show or a movie out um every single year, with the exception of I think three different random years. Um, every single year since 1978. That that's amazing. I was probably like pregnant or whatever, but I I cannot tell you, I honestly, like, I do not take a moment of it for granted. Like, I feel so fortunate to be in this industry that I love so much um, and to still be doing that which I love. You know, I feel like, because our industry has changed drastically mm-hmm. over the decades. And um, yeah, I, I, oh gosh, I, love every i love going on set i love each project i love different roles um and i and i never it never ceases to be fantastic to me um every time i'm working so do, do, do you think do you think that's a secret to your success i mean and this is something we we're going to talk about later but let's get right to it because okay. in any walk of life any line of work people like to work with people who they like to be around just fun people, yes. nice people, people with a good vibe and a good spirit. Do you, do you think that that passion that you have, that enthusiasm is part of that secret sauce that keeps you going and keeps you being, you know, someone who they want on set? Yeah, I would certainly like to think so, but you do, you know, there have been a few actors that will remain nameless that you worked with and you're like, how is it that you have this incredible career and you're this awful to people? Mm. How is this possible? It shouldn't be the case because we're so fortunate to be here. And, um, and, you know, my opinion is that you should, you know, it starts with the top down. And um, when you have people at the top that are just wonderful, it's just such an incredible trickle down effect. And, and it, fe- it affects your entire production. But yeah, I mean, I would certainly like to think that that contributes to it. Um, I would imagine it would, you know, but who knows? Do you think that this enthusiasm, I know you've said you've carried it your entire career, but I want to go back to the beginning because we've had so many guests on this show where it's like, oh, your 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 parents, your family were like longshoremen or your far- farmers in Idaho, how did yeah. you get into acting? You're kind of the opposite. Like, did you even have a choice? Like, did you even have a thought in your head to go in a different direction? Because your whole family is actors. I, I never did. Um, so my story, I'll give you the short version, is my mom, My well, here's the thing. My mom grew up in a small town. I, I was born in Georgia. Again, small town, Powder Springs, Georgia. My mom grew up in an even smaller town farmlands, uh, Tallapoosa. So, um, the fact that she escaped that and she became a model pretty young and, um, and she would take us on all of her photo shoots. She would always bring the kids. We were always just attached to the hip Mm -hmm. and they were like, Oh, your kids are so cute. We should put them in this, the photos with you. And -hmm. then from there we got a commercial agent and, um, and just started working like I th- my first like on camera commercial, I was three and I did a whole like speaking, <laughs> it, was, it was like this commercial for a bank and um, really started when I was three. 
And I, I have not, my dad would laugh at me because I was like, I always, every Christmas, I wanted him to get me a, um, a waitress notepad so that I could take everybody's orders because I always wanted to be a waitress. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really appreciate that I, ha I never had to do that in real life, but I probably would have loved it. <laughs> I was going to say, there's still time. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> oh my gosh. But, um, yeah, no, I never really made the decision of like, cause so many people will say, how do you do it? How do you get into the industry? And I'm like, I'm the last person that you should ask. I have not even the slightest clue. Hmm. That's amazing. And, but I mean, was there ever a point when you were a kid, when you were a teenager that you felt pulled away from it at all that you were built against it a little bit. Did you feel like, no, literally never, not, not, not even a moment. And I, in fact, I think I probably took it for granted that I was transitioning from being a child actor to a teen, to adult, to mother, to, you know, and to keep, to be able to continue was like, I, it, it took me a little while to go, wait a minute, this is pretty unusual that that i'm able to still do this and be a part of this industry that i love so much and make those transitions and um it's been such an incredible journey i i i literally pinch myself sometimes i'm like i can't believe <laughs> i've had this incredible ride it's it's been so wonderful you've been a part of so many really cool kind of mini eras if you will in tv and yeah. film you know we're here to talk about the nineties, but I want to look at the eighties for a minute because a couple of shows the that you were on that stand out ever the eighties. Yes. Already... Oh, okay. Well, Oh, well just all of it. But th I'm thinking in particular, I'm thinking about the music and just that time in, in life was so great. Yeah, I, absolutely. And you were a part of like some of the biggest things in pop culture because you popped on and guest starred on shows like silver spoons with Ricky Schroeder yes. with, a. Uh, uh, you were on Punky Brewster, like as a kid at the age that you were, like you were hanging out with like the most like pop culture, iconic, coolest, like kids on the planet. Yes. Like, was that intimidating to you at that point? Or were you kind of already just sort of like, whatever, like jaded a little bit about just being as part of that atmosphere? Um, I didn't have an awareness of it so much because they were just my friends. You know, we had this little group of us and we would all get together and and it was very different back then um we, there were parties and get togethers and we were all just they were just all my buddies you know mm -hmm. so um i i didn't feel intimidated by it i love that that time in my life was so special um it was really it was really you know i i look back on my i'm like i wish so much i could find my my address book my phone book which I have somewhere. The names that I have in that little book, I can't even begin to tell you. But they were just my friends, you know? Right. You were Brad all growing Pitt, up together. You know, Ricky Schroeder, Ben Affleck. <laughs> you know, it's just, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no big deal. This is just my my phone book. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, it's amazing. The Corys. We can't forget the Corys. Of course. The of course. <laughs> Icons. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it, just to touch on what you said before, just the idea that you've been able to, you know, you worked as a kid, you worked in your teens, you worked in your twenties. Like there's so many people who kind of fall into like some point in their lives where it's like, oh, there's like a weird in between age and it's hard to, you know, maintain traction and nobody really knows yeah. how to cast you. And you almost have to wait until you're older and then maybe kind of start over again. But yeah. like, that was never a thing for you. Like what, what's the. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, what I'm telling you, like, I, I don't know how I got so fortunate, but I, you know, I think there was a time at one point where uh, casting directors, they all knew me and had imagined like, Oh, well we know Robin and she's not right for this or, and so then I had to fight against that a little bit. Um, which, uh, but it wasn't really a, a thing thing, but, um, yeah, it's just been so interesting how the industry has changed, how much it's changed, and how how much harder um, it seems to be to to get roles. Like guest spots were like in my back pocket, Re recurs like eighties. Mm -hmm. It was so easy, you know. Now you are competing against a listers for guest spots. You know, you're like, well, I can't compete with that. What, what am I going to do? You know, so. Yeah. It's, it's a totally different world. 
Um, but yet, the more things change, the more things stay the same. And we're going to talk about one of the projects that you've done that has come back to the present all over again in the last year or so. Um, let's talk about Karate Kid 3. This is what right. many people know and love and remember you from. Yeah. The story is out there. It's pretty public. It seems you know, pretty well known that you appeared, your character, uh, Jessica Andrews, was originally intended to be another love interest for Daniel LaRusso. Mm -hmm. And then the age thing, the fact that you were still 16 years old, prevented that. And they had to kind of rewrite your character to be platon a platonic friend. This is true. I'm curious, at what point in the game was that known or realized or acknowledged? Like, did you get the job um, with them knowing that they were going to have to rewrite this part and they just wanted you that badly for it that they decided to do that? I like that version. Let's go with that <laughs> one. <laughs> um, to be honest with you, the, the script was still kind of a work in progress mm -hmm. um, while we were shooting. So I, I got the sense that uh, there was a bit of frustration all around. I wasn't privy to too much of that, though. I, I, my experience was was terrific. I was absolutely beside myself that I was a part of this incredible franchise that I grew up being obsessed with. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got the audition, and it was a fairly simple process, I think I met John Avildsen once, twice, no, probably once and then a callback, and then I tested. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it that I was getting to do a scene, a screen test with Daniel LaRusso, himself yeah. with Ralph Macchio. It was honestly, it was <laughs> epic. So anyway, is it, I'm, it, <laughs> I, I, I'm curious just from an actor's perspective for, for those of us, including myself, who've not been in that position. Is it, is it a little bit of an adjustment like mentally that you have to make to play uh, to play a role with someone, you know, the, the chemistry with, with uh, Ralph Macchio and you're supposed to be the same age, essentially, right. mm -hmm. when he's actually, you know, an 11 year older than you adult. He was, it, yes. Is there any strange, I mean, and again, I know eventually this became platonic, so not as big of a deal. But sure. is is there still sort of an adjustment that you have to make in your head there to kind of, you know, make sure that you're you're approaching his character in the way that you know, that age dynamic should be as opposed to the way it actually is. I mean, I wish I could say it was that well thought out for me at 17 years old. It just wasn't. I was just so excited to be a part of it. And I, you know, I just showed up and did my job and, and yeah. Ralph could not have been kinder or more professional, but it was definitely, you could definitely sense the age gap. I mean, he was an adult, he was married. I was a kid in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we were in, definitely different uh, places in our lives but it didn't seem to affect our work um and i just oh i just honestly oh my gosh it was so great <laughs> it was so i showed my daughter um a couple of years ago and and we're watching it and i'm like i can't believe that's my name up there with <laughs> pat marita and ralph macchio and robin lively what the karate it's... kid <laughs> It was so such an iconic franchise back then for its time, yeah. but I don't think anyone would have necessarily expected that, you know, media and technology and streaming services and all these opportunities to kind of go back and kind of dig into that iconic stuff and make it bigger than ever like it has with Cobra yeah. Kai. Yes. And we're going to get there, but I mean, obviously there was no way at the time that you would have had any idea that there'd be a future for Jessica. Yeah. Right? No clue. Absolutely no clue. Uh, no clue. So this has been so much fun to be able to revisit that character. Oh my gosh. It's been insane. Unbelievable. Now, yeah. and, and before we're going to hit back on it, but I, I want to do, because this is nineties to now. So we've got to bust through the nineties yeah. and I want to throw just a, small sampling of all the things you did in the nineties at you. Okay. And, and I'd love just for you to share your thoughts, your memories, just okay. your initial reactions to all these things. Mm -hmm. um, a show that actually you appeared on in 1989, but I always think of it primarily as a nineties show and like the ultimate showcase of every young actor 
mm. in Hollywood appearing oh. on this show at some point. 21, Jump, 21 Street. Jump Street. Yes. yes. Every single actor. Mm. <laughs> Literally every we we all had a turn. <laughs> Was there anybody on your on your episode that besides the main cast that you remember coming through that was somebody we would remember today? Oh, absolutely. Um, so we had Donovan Leach and then in a small co-star role, um, are you ready for this? Very small, very small role was Vince Vaughn. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Vince, he and I became really good friends on that show. Like he was my buddy. And then, he just blew up, just yeah. absolutely exploded. But <laughs> there was like, I think I've, I've got it on my Instagram somewhere. Wait, wait, wait. Like, oh, I posted it a long time ago, but it was in a classroom scene and he's like right behind me. Um, I don't think anybody realizes that was Vince Vaughn, but yeah. It's great. It, 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 for those of you who have not gone back and checked out 21 Jump Street in a long time, it's like the ultimate 90s guilty pleasure. Like I just flipped on an episode a few weeks ago and yeah. it was like Jason Priestley and Pauly Shore like talking to each other. Like I only watched for a minute, oh, but I was like, "My gosh!" It's like this is like the meeting place. This That's is the melting so pot. <laughs> you know, Jason and I dated a few years after that. Wow. So yeah, for like two years. We were so so young, but yeah, it's like seventeen. <laughs> but of course, Jason was did a guest spot on it. Us, all of my friends, all yeah. of my friends. You never so, did 90210, did you? That's that's like the show you well, didn't hit. Well, for now, this that's kind of a story. And, and I'll try to make it really short. But <laughs> I auditioned for the role of Andrea Zuckerman and wow. and turned it down. Um, met with Aaron Spelling. It was a whole thing. I ended up turning it down because at that point I was like, I, I, I read the script and I was like, oh, I love the role of the sister. And they were like, oh, Shannon Doherty's already cast. I'm like, oh, it's too bad. Mm -hmm. I had been playing, like, constantly playing this role that was like, you know, the underdog and the one with low self-esteem. And, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I don't want to do this role again. I want to do something different. Um, and then I was dating Jason at the time. And um, he then went in and got it. Uh, and, and actually, Jenny and I, we... I'd worked with Jenny, Jace, and Jason on, um, well, that's how we met, was this this Disney film called Teen Angel Returns. And so they end up on the show. I gotta tell you though, to be honest with you, um, there's not a moment in my life where I'm like, I cannot believe I did that. I regret that decision so much because I wouldn't be where I'm at today had I made that decision. So yeah. um, pretty crazy though, that that show was so massive. And I was like, nah. <laughs> oh, no thanks i'm good it's got to feel good in a way you didn't need it you didn't I need guess, it i guess you know <laughs> i'm gonna tell myself that <laughs> um a, a cult favorite i'd say at this point but those of us who know we know parker lewis can't lose yes that was a really like innovative show the way it was yeah. shot and some of the things they did for its time especially it, was that a kind of a wacky scene to like like a, a wacky environment to no i thought it was really interesting i loved it because you're right there there were no shows that were doing that at the time um and i, I and cory well we called him corky at the we called him corky but he was mm -hmm. a buddy of mine and uh it's just again just one of those shows where i'm like showing up and working with my friends and having fun um but that was a really cool show i love that one i love that episode too yeah yeah um Actually, over the course of time, you were on this show a bunch, Doogie Howser, MD. Oh, yes. I that just did an a... awesome throwback yesterday uh, for, <laughs> for Doogie. I was going to do, <laughs> I was on the Fox lot. I was working at Fox, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go up and see Stage 18 because I, I had spent so much of my time there um, in the early 90s doing Doogie Howser and then Chicago Hope, same stage. And um, I was just such, such wonderful memories. Oh my, I, I, I just, I can't even with how great that was. And Neil was so much fun. He kept me laughing constantly. Mm. Uh, such a good environment. And um, I was so excited to be on that show. I loved it. You and Doogie kind of, if I remember correctly, you kind of ended up together at like the end of the show, right? Or towards the end of the, 
the run um, of the show? I don't remember. I can't remember the timing of it, but yes, at some point we did. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. that nice. Yeah. Um, and and then of course you end up on Chicago Hope. Like this is this is a ridiculous question, but this is a ridiculous show, so we have to ask it. Did, <laughs> You know, you're playing a nurse, and on Dookie, you're playing a nurse here. Uh -huh. Is it sometimes as simple as, oh, we just saw her playing a nurse somewhere, and now we've got this mental picture. That seems to work. Let's bring <laughs> her in to be this character. Like, is, does it work like that, do you um, think, in your career at I times? I don't think so. I mean, no. there, I mean, sure, it, it is a possibility, but I was auditioning along with everyone else. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't like it was offered to me because... I was had just played a nurse on Doogie Hauser, but you know, honestly, who knows? Maybe maybe that 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 was a factor. It didn't feel like it. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, this is a show lasted one season, but had to have been an amazing experience. George and Leo, um, yeah. you are uh, on a sitcom sound sound stage with Judd Hirsch and Bob Newhart playing Judd's daughter. What kind of a comedy education was that like for you? Oh, it was, it was, I mean, I'm working with absolute legends and we can't forget Jason Bateman mm. who played my husband in it, who was a comedy genius. Like I, I think I was his number one fan on set. <laughs> Every time we would do scenes, I was like dying, like do that line again, do that one again. That was so funny. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I ended up um, coming into the show, replacing an actress, which is always kind of difficult. Um, and um, it was Jim Burroughs directed an episode. Uh, I gotta tell you though, Half Hour is such a different beast than regular hour drama or, or Half Hour multicam, I should say, yeah. is so different and totally intimidating if i'm being honest with you because um you just you have to be you have to know how to set up the beats and set up the jokes or deliver the jokes it's like a very rhythmic kind of a thing yeah. um i felt a totally out of my element there um beyond thrilled to be there but i i uh, that was a that was a little bit of a hard one but but it was an incredible experience nonetheless did you was the studio audience something because you didn't come up through theater you you dove right in front of a camera did did that become intimidating to deal with once you were already so deep in your career doing other things no i you know and i had i had done um multi-cam guest spots like punky brewster was multi-cam silver spoons was multi-cam i loved it i absolutely loved the live audience aspect of it it was so much fun you felt like you were doing a, th a theater production um and just to have the energy of of the of the audience was so ah uh, it's it was incredible but they would do things like you would you would film you would do two shows and mm -hmm. you would like during lunch they would come at you and be like okay we're changing things and they'd give you rewrites during lunch and totally nerve-wracking mm. but um an incredible experience like I, I i loved it i really did but i was i think on george and leo i felt a little bit i mean look at who i'm working with you know it's hard um, not to feel intimidated i would imagine I mean? like they couldn't have been kinder or more welcoming but it was just i mean all three of them were absolute comedy geniuses um and and it wasn't something that i was super familiar with i wasn't used to doing half hour uh but it's too bad it was short-lived because I, I I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just another highlight. And we can go on and on with so many more things you did in the 90s. And then, you know, every single year, like we said, all the way up to now. Um, I want to get... are not really doing half hours with with audiences anymore, I don't think. I uh, hear, I mean... Read, right? I mean, if anything, I feel like the trend is bringing them back a little bit. I mean, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, we just had uh, the revival of Night Court debut. Um, that's, that 70s show, is that also? Yes, that's Does on that Netflix. Does that have a audience? Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, Speaking. but certainly these shows are in the style yeah. of yes. those shows. I don't know the how. It makes all the difference. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a dying breed now, which is sad. I, I agree. I mean, I agree. I think that you can tell when you watch those shows which ones have have a, an artificial nature to them, even oh, yeah. if there is sort of yeah. a live audience, but it's sort of a mix of right. 
a lot of production. Uh, yeah, it, it is sad, but I think that they're so unique and so appealing that people continue to watch the old stuff and that will continue to drive somebody to want to go back and do more of it. So yeah. that's the hope. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, so let's talk about what's had everyone uh, buzzing about you over the last year or so, which is the return of a, I mean, look, I think Cobra Kai in a way was almost the return of a franchise that nobody realized how much they wanted until it got here. Yeah. Um, I think people looked at the Karate Kid movies as, yeah, we loved them when we were kids. I don't think anybody was clamoring for those characters to return. Right. But once, but once they got here, I mean, the world is in love with this show and for very mm -hmm. good reason. Yeah. And I think the same thing could be said with, uh, with the return of Jessica, you showing up in, mm -hmm. in season five and it's like, wait a second, this is, I mean, quite honestly, of the three Karate Kid movies, the three original Daniel, you know, Daniel LaRusso <laughs> Karate Kid movies. Yeah. I'd say the third kind of had the most mixed reaction to it. For sure. But even so, there was such an outpouring of love and excitement when you showed up. Aww. And it, ma it made so much sense. <laughs> um, what was it like for you? I mean, that had to have been a phone call that you never... It had to be one of the most surprising phone calls of your entire career, right? Well, not really, because at that point we're we're season five. I'm like, okay, <laughs> they got to bring Jessica back, right? Because yeah. I knew that they were bringing a lot of the characters and from from the film to the show. And so when I finally got the call, I was of course ecstatic and elated and super pumped to do it. But it wasn't so much a surprise, okay. you know. Um, but they. They did a great job at keeping it under wraps. They wanted it to be a, a, a big reveal for the fans. And um, I ended up going to a Netflix screening of it that they invited me to. And they were like, just say that you're here supporting the show. Of course, I had already filmed the episode. Yeah. Um, but it was it, it, that that experience was like a huge family reunion. Like I just was screaming on set, running around. <laughs> I was so <laughs> excited to see everyone. I I um i hadn't seen um well billy and i have been friends for decades and decades way 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 back so he took me on a tour of the entire set showed me around i hadn't seen ralph in f so many countless years mm -hmm. and um yuji and i did uh he plays chosen uh mm -hmm. we did a, a a disney film called a tv film called um, johnny kapahala together okay. so honestly it was just such a great reunion and then the additional cast that i'd never met could not have been kinder or more welcoming or wonderful so it was just the atmosphere was was really terrific did you enjoy the way they rolled out the return of jessica because oh, yes. the connection made sense but you got to have some fun there too right <laughs> oh the bar fight <laughs> i mean yeah i was so excited first of all i was like oh no i don't have any scenes with ralph how disappointing and then i thought wait a minute but this is so cool. The way, I mean, I was so um, impressed with how the writers, um, it was so well thought out, this, the character and the return of, uh, they, they were like, we were brainstorming, trying to figure out the best way to do it. And I think it was so spot on. It was so cool. What a cool thing to make her part of the family. And she was the one that introduced Daniel and Amanda. I was like, this is so great to be cousins. And Courtney's just, she and I, <laughs> we, had, we had way too much fun, <laughs> way too much fun. Yeah. And, and, and you could tell you could, that was just a fun scene. And, yes. you know, like you said, you guys get in the big bar fight and it was so great. <laughs> it was so much fun. It's so much fun to see. I mean, not just you, a lot of the characters on the show, but certainly you get to do more physically in the new, in Cobra Kai even than than back then like like oh, everyone's yeah. roles it feels like they found a way to expand them and give them more opportunities to have yeah. fun and have fun with them so absolutely so it's not just like this walk on cameo where you're like eh no they really really think it through and they're thoughtful about how to to 
to do these because I think the fans are so excited too that mm -hmm. they want to like really like surprise them and and not disappoint. And I think the way they 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 brought Jessica back was like a total home run. It was it was awesome. I'm going to put you on the spot for a second here. One last question about Cobra Kai. Uh, you are in a pitch meeting right now, uh, and we know that it's been announced Cobra Kai is coming to an end. We've got one more season. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to ask you if we're going to see Jessica again in that final season because I know if you if we were, you would not be allowed to say anything. That's true. But you're in a pitch meeting right now because there's always been talk of spinoffs. So mm -hmm. you are pitching a spinoff that Jessica will be a focal point of. Uh -huh. What's the concept here? I've got an idea, <laughs> but I want to know if – Okay. If, well, hang on now. If you've got the idea, why don't you tell me? Because you're just throwing this at me last minute. <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, look, we saw the team, right? We saw the team of Amanda and Jessica. Yes. And it seemed like you guys were, you know, you kick ass pretty well side by side. Yeah, we do. So my idea, yeah, I'm pitching Amanda and Andrews. And you guys are now some sort of crime fighting <laughs> team. Oh, my gosh. That would be so much freaking fun i love it that would be so good that's 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 gonna trump anything that i've got off the top of my head i gotta tell you but i love it i think we should roll with that i think we should actually call it the studio now set up a it. pitch meeting mm -hmm. and let's get this going <laughs> let me know i'm absolutely free <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i love it awesome now well, okay i mean look that's further in the future but first of all Thank you so much again for being on the show. I know, honestly, your time is very limited. <laughs> so. No, it's so kind. Well, you know, it is, but I, I, I also have downtime too, you know, so I get to spend a lot of time with my kids and my family, which I absolutely cherish. That's awesome. And probably a big reason why you're still able to, you love what you do. You, yeah. Incorporating that time is so yeah. important for not getting burnt out on your career. Yes. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes. That's awesome. So why don't you let us know, is there anything, because we know there's stuff coming down the line. So what can we look forward to seeing you in next in the coming months and the next mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. What do you want to tease us? Uh, what projects are coming down the wire? Um, you know, it's so interesting. I A lot of times you'll do projects and they're like, oh, well, don't say anything. You can't say anything. And I'm like, why not? Why can't we just? But it's this, you always have to be so tight-lipped. But um, I did a film last year called National Anthem that I'm very proud of. And it just got into South by Southwest. Um, so that's super exciting. Um, nice. Directed by Luke Guilford. Um, Charlie Plummer plays my son. And that, I, I've had these, I've got to tell you, I've had these opportunities this past year to play roles that um, have been so out of the box for me. And they've allowed me to just like, oh, I can't even tell you how fulfilling it's been and how great it's been. I've worn wigs in a couple of of um, things that I've done. I did this really cool short film called The Empty Chair. Um, I did a, another movie with my husband. Bart Johnson, who you may know as Coach Bolton from High School Musical. Mm -hmm. um, we had the good fortune of doing another film together called, we did one called Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters. Okay. It's out now, it's streaming now. And then we did one called um, Someone Like You. I did another movie called Ganny Meet. Lots of things. Jeez. Lots of exciting, exciting, exciting projects. And this is just what, the last week or so you did all this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was on, I, I counted. Since October, I did, I was on 22 airplanes. That's <laughs> to and from. That's like round trips. But I did a couple of conventions too, which I've been doing more of, which is, they've been so much fun. Mm. And I'm going to get to do one with Ralph and Billy and Martin. Really? And, yes. In nice. Cincinnati, Ohio. And that's going to be like March um, twenty. For, to, like, I think it's 24th, 25th, and 26th. So, okay. That's um, awesome. About that. They're fun. <laughs> it, those are so much fun, I have to tell you, because I get the opportunity to actually meet people that have followed my career. And it is one of the most humbling and um, special things to get to do, to be able to be like, hug and be like, oh my gosh, it's so great to meet you. And thank you so much. And it's so special. I can't even tell you. 
There's nobody who's there's no bigger fans than those who will take the time to go to a convention it's in true. my estimation. It's absolutely true. But you really say for me, it's like I'm su- so many times I'm surprised to hear the stories or like to know that I've had a significant impact on their lives based on a, a role that I played. It's uh, it's more special than I can even begin to express to you. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're excited to just watch all the special moments and all the special performances and special stuff that we know you're going to continue to do. You're probably right. headed to the set right now after we <laughs> after we get <laughs> off this call. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for everything you've done and everything we know you will continue to do. And thank uh, you so much. can't wait to keep watching you. Thank you for this wonderful interview. You've been so great. And um, I've enjoyed every second of it. Likewise, likewise. Myself as well. Hopefully you all have. And uh, hopefully y'all will check us out next time right here on 90s to Now. Make sure you subscribe and share and like and do all the things that you do to help keep us going and keep us growing. So until next time, thank you. And thank you, Robin. Thank you.